Hi everyone, I want to talk a little bit more about the accounting behind uh, the loanable funds model, specifically national savings, because there's an important point here I want you to understand. So at the end of the last video we saw that national savings S is equal to private savings plus government savings. And then after a little bit of tedious algebra, we were able to show you that national savings S is equal to GDP total income generated minus total personal consumption expenditures minus government spending. Okay, So far, so good. And then I did a few examples and showed you how the uh, supply curve for loanable funds will shift if G changes and other things that might cause it to shift or changes in uh, GDP and changes in consumption. But if you look at this, you might say, well, this is surprising. There's absolutely no room for taxes or transfer payments to affect uh, national savings. And it turns out that's wrong. Taxes and transfer payments in general will affect national savings and therefore will cause the uh, supply curve for loanable funds to shift. Now the key thing to remember here is that the way taxes and transfer payments are going to have an effect on national savings is they won't directly affect government spending, so we can pretend that's constant. They won't directly affect GDP, so we'll go ahead and pretend that's constant. In fact, you may even pretend that GDP is equal to potential, but taxes and transfer payments will have an effect on private consumption. And because they'll have an effect on private consumption, that in turn will have an effect on national savings. So really what's going to go on here is I have to explain to you how taxes and transfer payments are going to affect private consumption expenditures. And once you now understand how it affects private consumption expenditures, that's going to tell you what's going to happen to national savings, which will tell you what should happen to the supply curve of loanable funds down the road. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. And the key thing is going to start off with disposable income. So I just want to go back and explain what we mean by disposable income. Well, disposable income is equal to all the income you receive plus all the transfer payments, where transfer payments are things like welfare and unemployment benefits, payments you receive from the government for, by definition, not doing anything in return, minus any tax revenue the government takes away from you. Okay? So let's... Keeping with our example, we're keeping transfer payments constant. We're also keeping GDP constant. All right? So we've got transfer payments and GDP are assumed to be held constant. If you increase taxes, or we'll do our example as an increase in taxes. If you increase taxes, then by definition, disposable income has to fall. Okay, so now just, that is the first link, understanding that increasing taxes, if we hold GDP and transfer payments constant, will lead to a drop in disposable income. Now, here comes the second link, and it's just as important as the first. There's essentially two different things you can do with um, your disposable income, and maybe I should erase that to eliminate any confusion. In fact, we'll call that. There we go for the down arrow. Disposable income can do one of two things. It can be used either on personal consumption expenditures. You can go out and buy food, clothing, cars, you know, whatever it is, vacations, etc. That's all personal consumption expenditures. Or it can be used for savings, but it's not used, but it's used for private savings. Okay, and so. We know that there's a decrease in disposable income, so the question is, what effect does that have on consumption and private savings? And in general, both will decline. So in general, a decrease in taxes will cause consumption and private savings to fall. So here's sort of like the chain of events I'm thinking of. If you decrease taxes, or excuse me, if you increase taxes, that's going to end up decreasing disposable income which will end up decreasing consumption expenditures and decrease private savings. Now notice this is the key result here. If you decrease consumption expenditures, then holding GDP and government spending constant, what must happen to national savings? So you just told, we just went through and said, oh, an increase in taxes will cause Holding income and transfer payments constant will cause disposable income to fall. If you decrease disposable income, then that's going to cause the sum of consumption and private savings to fall. In general, 
a fall in disposable income will cause both a decrease in consumption and a decrease in private savings. Well, if there's a decrease in consumption over here, so if an increase in tax rates leads to lower personal consumption, then by definition up here in this identity, this one right here, you're going to have an increase in national savings. So I ran out of space, so let me erase this because I don't care about the private savings part. This ends up increasing national savings. So an increase in taxes causes a decrease in disposable income. That's what we showed right here. The decrease in disposable income is going to fall cause a decrease in consumption, which is what we showed right here. And the decrease in consumption is going to cause an increase in um, national savings, which is what we showed right there. Okay, So taxes, even they don't explicitly appear in the uh, equation for national savings, they do affect national savings. Okay, Now some of you might say, now wait a minute here, private savings falls as well as consumption. And since private savings is part of national savings, doesn't that mean national savings has to fall? And that's a great question, and it's a great point, but it turns out it's wrong slightly. And I'm, I'm not sh um, I could make things a little bit more explicit if I gave exact uh, equations for private savings and government savings and give you exact numerical values, and then I could show it to you a little bit more concretely. But more or less, this is the um, short answer. Well, if you decrease taxes, that does decrease private savings, right? So to some extent, private savings will fall. I don't know by how much, but it will fall. So there's downward pressure on national savings because private savings fall. However, taxes are revenue for the government, so higher taxes mean increased government savings. And the effect on government savings is large enough that total savings in the economy increases. Right. So that's the short answer to the question. If I gave you a more explicit form for what we call the consumption function, I could show it to you mathematically. But for right now, I think it's easiest for you to remember that, oh, yes, an increase in taxes decreases private savings, but it increases public savings even more, so national savings as a whole rises. All right. So I did this example for, trans for taxes. You ought to be able to do a similar example for, say, a decrease in transfer payments. But I'm not going to go ahead and do that. I'll leave that as an exercise for you, yourself.